Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming out to our talks for Joe and I. We're going to talk a little bit about education this afternoon. And uh, to start off, I'd like to tell you a few stories about how at Penn Manor School District over in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, we are uh, teaching the next generation of WordPress bloggers, writers, and hackers. So if you were to visit Penn Manor School District, and I, and I hope you would, okay, we run 90 minutes here, um, 90 minutes outside of Philadelphia, I hope you'd come visit us. I think you would see a fantastic school filled with 5,300 remarkable kids, uh, hundreds of fantastic faculty and staff. And if you looked at us from the outside, we would probably feel relatively typical to you. We'd look somewhat typical. But our technology programs, our technology philosophy, differs dramatically from most public school districts across the state and across the country. Whereas most public school districts embrace commercial and proprietary software as part of their core infrastructure and their classroom initiatives, we've built our classes, our classrooms, and our infrastructure around open source software. And over the past 15 years, there's been several key platforms that have allowed us to place bigger and bigger bets on open source. And obviously, WordPress is one of them. And I'd like to tell you a couple stories about WordPress use at Penn Manor. It was about eight years ago that we broke from the typical tradition of other schools that were using proprietary content management systems to manage their classroom websites and their school websites. We broke from that tradition and we began using WordPress MU at the time to launch a multi-site blog network for all of our teacher classrooms, our school building sites, and our district website. And that's been phenomenal for us over the past several years. WordPress is a tremendous gift for educators and for education. Our teachers love it because, as you know, out of the box, you can just play with it immediately. And it really makes our teachers' lives much simpler. And our teachers frequently turn to WordPress to post everything from homework announcements to pictures of what's happening in the classroom um, to just about any type of communication you can imagine between an elementary or high school teacher and parents in the community. And at the building level, our principals and our secretaries love it as well. Let me tell you, there are a few jobs that are more hectic than an elementary teacher. One of those hectic jobs is an elementary school secretary. And they really appreciate how quickly we can bring them up to speed on quick publishing, and it really increases their self-confidence. But several years ago, we attempted to take WordPress and our publishing to the next level. And we started to think bigger about the types of projects that we could use in our public schools. And one was the redesign of our very ancient high school newspaper. So a quick show of hands, how many of you ever wrote for your high school newspaper back in the day? All right, good show. Let me see another show of hands. How many of your high school newspapers looked a lot like this? All right, yes. That is Penn Manor High School's Penn Points, which hadn't changed much in 40 years. Before we got to it with WordPress and with our students, it was a very traditional publication. It was printed on paper. It came out a few times every year at best. If we were lucky, the circulation reached maybe a couple hundred students and a dozen or so staff. And unfortunately, most of those papers landed in the recycle bin. But there was resistance to moving this online. I had heard from colleagues and faculty that were concerned that moving online was going to be too technical. Some folks were telling me that if you move it online, who would possibly read a student-level high school news magazine? Obviously, that wasn't the case. We had the software, but we also needed a fearless teacher, and we found one in a teacher by the name of Susan Baldridge, who was a former reporter for the Lancaster New Era. She was also an English teacher, and she had just picked up the journalism class at Penn Manor High School, and she was quite fearless. But there was something else that she did, which was critical to our success, and that was flattening the classroom. When we began redesigning and revamping the newspaper, one of our key objectives was to make it as collaborative as possible. And in her classroom, the hierarchy was flattened and students were involved in every level of re-imaging the newspaper. They chose colors and graphics and themes and feature stories. There was really no distinction between the teacher and the students in her classroom and, all, and the results were quite remarkable. This was the revamp and the relaunch of the Penn Points newspaper. 
And this happened about five years ago. And at the time, these students won, with the first launch of their first online publication, they won a National Scholastic Press Association Award. It was completely unheard of for a brand new uh, online newspaper to win this award. But they didn't stop with that. I think the lesson that we learned is that by having an open publication, where kids were deeply involved in their own learning and writing about topics that they were passionate about, it really brought out some of the best writing with our students. Two of our students interviewed inmates. These were inmates that were sentenced to life in prison. They were tried as adults as they were teenagers. And this was just an amazing, remarkable piece of student journalism. And it's still up there. It's Life Has a Different Meaning for Juveniles Tried as Adults. Check it out, Google it. It's remarkable writing. But I think the takeaway from this piece is it's the type of fantastic writing that would have, would have never had exposure to the world if it wouldn't have been for a tool such as WordPress and if it wouldn't have been for a teacher that, would have, that, that had not embraced open. The editor at the time sort of blew away that notion about nobody was going to read the site. This was so empowering for these kids. It was authentic writing for an authentic audience, and it really changed many of their lives as they went on to study journalism. So what happens when we take that same open environment and we scale it up to the entire school? Two and a half years ago, we fully embraced open and launched the state's largest one-to-one -one laptop computing program based on Linux and open source software exclusively. Most school districts hand kids a tied-up and locked-down device, and they prevent them, they prevent the kids from really learning computing and diving in and setting up their own little versions of LAMP on their own machines. We embrace an open philosophy with our kids, and we give every single one of those students root access to their computers. To support the entire program and the entire project, we've created a student-led help desk, and this is much like the spirit of the PenPoints project. Whereas PenPoints was highly collaborative and students were given voice and the hierarchy was flattened between the teachers and the students, those same principles are used for our high school help desk. 21 high school student apprentices work side by side with my technology team and I, and they are the core support group for their peers. They write documentation, they resolve tickets, they repair laptops, they're learning fantastic technology skills, but more importantly, they're learning how to build a technology community. For some of these kids, it's the first time that they've ever held a soldering iron and repaired a logic board. And for many of them, they've never hacked together a shell script before. And they're learning amazing things. Some of them are pushing further, and they're learning coding. And a few of them even assisted my team and I to build some of the software programs that we use to support the entire one-to-one -one project. And as good internet citizens and as good community citizens, we're making our code available, their code available, up on GitHub for other schools to learn from and use. But there's one requirement for all of our high school help desk, desk students, no matter their level of technical expertise, and that is they will write for the technology help desk blog. And this is a big deal for a number of these kids because so many of them are reluctant writers. But we're, when they are given the opportunity to write again to an authentic audience, their peers, and to write about topics that they are intensely passionate about, I think it's bringing out the best in them. I want to leave you with one thought when it comes to students and education, because if you're not in education, I think there is something that you can still do to change the narrative across most of our schools. Penn Manor is atypical. Most schools are tied up and locked down when it comes to technology. And I personally don't feel that that's in the best interest of our kids. I think we need to consider embracing open. And I think we need to give our kids voice. So reach out to your school boards, reach out to educators that you know, and ask them a question. And the question is this. When it comes to education, which side of the command line should our kids be on? Are we going to pre-wire their classrooms and keep learning inside a sandbox? Or are we going to embrace open and give our kids the skills and trust them to change the world? Thank you.